And at the same time, understanding that for every decision that you make, another decision that you didn't make in dealing with the ability to lose dealing with not having your cake and eating it too which is like literally the fucking point of that saying is that you can't have it both ways and that you have to deal with it and yet it feels like that escapes a lot of people is the understanding that for every decision that you make you didn't make a bunch of other decisions and really understanding the power of the decision that you did make in my mind lies in all of the decisions that you didn't make that's where the competitive mindset really, really, really comes into place. Because that's, those are most of the decisions that you are making. That you didn't go all of those other ways. That you didn't choose all of those other things. And that you have to deal with the situation that you have put in front of yourself now. And that's not the way that a lot of people make their decisions is just, well, I have this, so this is this. Instead of, I chose this, and now I don't have these nine other options anymore. This is out the window. This is, so why did I not choose these nine other things? Because there's a lot of different ways to go with it, especially with how complicated games are now. It's easy to see other people making decisions and chalking it up to, well, that's just the way that it is. But if you actually want an edge, you have to you have to live inside of the ideas that no one else is navigating. You have to make decisions that are really hard to make that other people aren't making for a lot of good reasons. But if that's a different avenue and a new angle on a way to win, then that's how you reinvent the whole fucking thing. That's how you fucking... That's how you create counters. That's how you move forward. That's how you think for yourself and actually begin to understand the game for itself take a different approach and test it against what you already know works it's not nearly as useful to just keep running the same meta principles into the ground over and over once you've reached a certain point you're going to plateau doing that and you're never actually innately deeply understanding the principles behind the game that you're playing when you are just doing what everyone just does. If you're not actually testing stress tests, all the different angles, stress tests, the different pressure points, figure out really, truly why your opponents and your teammates and you operating with and against those variables are doing what they're doing so frequently. That's when pattern recognition comes into play. We're actually seeing all of their decisions, all 10 decisions that have been made. However many are actually going on, it's probably a lot more than 10, but when they choose that one, okay, so why didn't they choose the other nine? So now this gives you a lot of insight into the avenue that they're taking, but if you don't understand this avenue, then you don't have any real insight. So your only insight is what you have received. You've been on the receiving end of their avenue. That is only half of the picture. It's two sides to every coin. So if you're not evaluating every avenue for yourself, you're not keeping an open mind to the efficacy and the real, genuine, like, effectiveness 
of the different avenues, not just like, oh, well, I don't really like it and I don't think it's that good. Genuinely measuring those avenues for yourself and having concrete conclusions, at least to some degree, like, well, what is just straight up, what's the most amount of damage that you can do in the game in, in an instant? And then what's like, just rank that. Let's just can any type of game. What's the most, what's the top five amounts of damage that you can do different play styles? What is the best, the best, most powerful gun in the game? And then what does the second most damage? What does the third most damage? What does the fourth? So then they chose the one that does the third most damage. So then what does this get them over these two? Can they shoot it faster? Does it have, uh, is it easier to reload? Does it have better ammo capacity? Is it just play style on their end? Are they planning on being really close to you? Are they planning on being really far away from you? Why didn't they choose these two? Why didn't they choose the fourth one? If there's another similar one to this one, why didn't they choose this one? All of that stuff can be whittled down. And don't just assume, oh, well, he picked uh, this, so he's going to be sitting there or there or there. Because then the moment he kills you from over there, well, guess what, dingus? Why did you assume that? Like, that's not good pattern recognition. That's you assuming a bunch of shit. So over time, once you have actually determined the value of what you understand with all of the decisions that are being made, because you have also made those decisions yourself, you can start to see where their intentions reveal themselves, and you can start to not make assumptions, but to recognize patterns about what they are actually showing you. There is so much information free game that in most games that you can use to such an effective degree that if you think about it the right way, you can win just based off of the effectiveness of your flexible plan of attack and the efficacy of that alone. You can win off of that. You have to execute, obviously, but that's where winners win is it's in the details. It's in all the small details that add up to the big picture that is the arena that you are operating within. And if you don't have a good idea of what's going on, you're just fucking guessing and assuming, and you're not going to have anything worth respecting as far as a flexible game plan goes when you're just guessing and assuming you have to understand the arena that you're stepping into like literally just i did this for a game the other day what was it i don't even remember the game it was a shooter i literally just took a calculator and i <laughs> it's not even probably not the best way to do it but i was just sick of not knowing i literally just took a calculator and just multiplied the bullet damage per how much ammo is in it. Literally. I just figured out the total amount of damage, and then I added up what each effect of each gun is, and then I figured out how it reloads, if I like it or not, and then what the recoil spread is. And that's literally how I figured out that allegedly like i own like you know nine games or nine guns in a game or some shit like that i'm working on with like the one that i just got the ninth gun but then i do the fucking math just to find out that the gun that i already was using that i like the most actually just does the most damage and it was like the fucking fourth gun that i got like days and days and days ago but, you know, you got to go through all the other guns and you got to give them a real shot and you got to see them fail and you got to figure out why you don't like them to realize that's the one. That's my gun right there. That's the one. 
and then you move on from there. Point one of your game plan established. And if you don't like or you do like other guns for other aspects, then you understand why and what situations you would use them in. So now, obviously, it might be a super fun play style for you to run around and fucking no scope shotgun people with an op. And if you're good at it, that's fucking cool. Good for you, man. But obviously, that is an extreme angle that needs a lot of practice. It's a really good mix up. But you understand with that play style the good and the bad that comes with it. And that is that changes your decision making innately. Being in that different mindset of understanding the different play style automatically flips your mindset. Or when it doesn't, you see it and you feel it immediately and you're like oh my god why am i playing like this when i have this and this setup like what am i doing like i'm playing like i still i got a sniper rifle and i'm running around with it like i got a fucking shotgun and i have these grenades but why do i have those grenades when i need these grenades because i'm trying to i'm trying to you know enter a room with this and i need this utility to do that so you build on your understanding of all of these different situations and you get into these modes and mindsets where you kind of snap back to this mental muscle memory of, okay, so I got this gun, I got this, so I have this gun, that changes the way that I can approach rooms, and I have this grenade, that would be thrown the best way with this gun, because I need to make sure that when I'm going inside the door, I got a shotgun, so my short range option is right here. I handle that with my gun. Grenade needs to disable the other side of the room. So I'm not going to throw a flashbang right in front of myself to potentially stun me and the person I'm trying to shoot just to get shot by the other guy and not kill the first person that I'm close to. So then let's reverse that situation. I got a sniper rifle. And I know that there are two people, one on each side. And I have an angle looking towards the back right of the situation, the room that I'm going in. And I got this guy pinned to the corner of the room. And I know he's there, but I know someone else is in the room too. If I need to throw a grenade into that room, I'm not going to throw a grenade at the guy that I'm trying to lure out and shoot on a timing because that's just going to make him stay in the corner and, oh, fuck, they know exactly where I am. I can't move at all anymore, so I'm just not going to, because now I can't do anything about it with the main gun that I have chosen. That's a bad situation for me. And now the other person gets to move based off the information that he just got from his teammate, having seen that they threw a grenade right at him. They know where he is. So now I'm going to move because I saw where the grenade came from. So I'm going to circle back around. And if they approach, I'm going to flank. And if they don't approach, then we get to just sit in here and accomplish, you know, our objective, which is defending whatever that is. So instead, I'm going to save my grenade for the guy that's on the left. I'm going to wait for the guy to come out on the right if I think he is. Otherwise, I'm going to move up. And in the same situation, I understand now that if I'm using my pistol, I do not have as much time as I do with my main weapon. It's not going to be as clean a kill, most likely. So now, when I enter, I have to move so much faster. And the grenade is going left instead of right if I need to nail down the right side guy. And in general, depending on who I'm approaching or the situation with the time and, you know, the type of game, if it's search and destroy or King of the Hill or something like that. And I have to, I have to make sure that I am in the room. Every single decision that I have made leading up to that point has been with the understanding that 
I'm not at my most optimal. So I have to adjust the way that I approach the situation because of the fact that it is not an optimal situation for me. So have I considered the optimal and the non-optimal in all of my decisions? Are all of my decisions being made with, well, if everything goes right, then it's going to look like this. And it needs to look like this. Well, guess what? Not everything is going to go right. So what in your kit can be used when it's not all going right? Because the moment it doesn't, when it doesn't, not if, but when it doesn't, guess what? Guess who's going to look like freaking dingus? And I, we've all been there, obviously. That's like all of these situations are designed to put you in situations like that to test you. That's why the game is hard. That's why it's worth playing. That's what makes it exciting. And that should be a huge part of your game plan is making sure that other people's kits don't work perfectly. That That is the other half of your game plan is recognizing what they are trying to do and making sure that that doesn't happen. But really having an edge comes with experience and it comes with quality pattern recognition and keeping an open mind about what is possible overall try new stuff figure out your own play style do your own thing that's how you're going to have the most fun that's how you're going to learn the most about the game that's how you're going to show other people how to have more fun and then once you start doing crazy shit and your team starts recognizing that you're doing awesome doing your own play style the fun only exponentially increases. Then they'll be like, oh, look at this guy. He's fucking running around with an op and he hasn't fucking scoped in once and he's on a 10 kill streak. What the fuck is this guy doing? He's crazy. Like, go do that. Go be that guy that can do that stuff. But fucking try your best when you're doing it. And don't just automatically fucking only your way and your team has to deal with you instead of the other team having to deal with you. Don't put your team in that situation because that's not a good play style. If you are a fucking full on liability in a competitive, truly competitive environment, not just like normal quick play games, that's whatever. That's where those are for. But in a truly competitive environment, showing people and communicating your mindset is going to be a really effective tool in helping people understand what you're doing and the angle that you're taking. If you are coming into it informed and you're calling stuff out for your team and you're showing that you are engaged, they are not going to have nearly as much of a problem with it if it goes badly. And they're going to appreciate it even more when it goes well. They're going to see it. You got something going on. You have figured something out and that they want you on your team to help them win as much as you want to help yourself win. That's what it's all about. It really is still being the best version of yourself always in every situation, and that's what it looks like in a competitive environment. It is you doing your thing the way that you know how to do it, but keeping everyone involved and everyone informed and being the catalyst of quality communication as well. Decisions are made together in a team environment. It's not just all of your teammates and you are all just dealing with all of the decisions that you're making the whole time, and it's all just a bunch of clashing bullshit. Those are, I don't care if it is a good decision in isolation, if it's a bad decision paired with all of the other decisions being made, that makes it a bad decision. Still. If you haven't taken everything into account, you haven't kept an open mind to everything that's occurring. And part of keeping an open mind is understanding that all of your teammates are not, believe it or not, they're not all making the best decision all the time. Whoa, another shocker. I think that was another Einstein quote. Believe it or not, your teammates aren't always going to make good decisions. That must be in the second level of the physics course that he used to teach. <coughs> If that wasn't obvious enough, that's extreme sarcasm. 
fucking guess what? You aren't gonna make all the best decisions all the time either. Ooh, whoa, another shocker. I'm sure Einstein definitely said that to someone at some point in his life. <laughs> If I had to guess, <laughs> he's definitely smart enough to fucking say that to someone. That part's obvious. So when other people make mistakes, just as you wouldn't want them to immediately jump down your throat, you don't jump down their throat because you are a thoughtful individual that cares about their teammates. You automatically understand, boom, okay. Mistake was made, and they capitalized on it. What do we have to do? Can we fix it, or can we just make up for it? What do we have to do? How do we get back to at least even? How There is a way to use that situation. You just don't see it yet. You don't see it yet, but it's there. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Admitting, well, fuck, I really, genuinely, I don't understand what I could have done in that situation to do better. Sometimes you just missed. Sometimes you just missed the shot. That happens. Sometimes it is just should have hit the shot. But if it's an extremely difficult shot to make, what kind of decisions were you making leading up to that? Is that legitimate? Is it actually, well, if I just made that shot, well, how many, how many times is it going to take you to hit that shot again? 10? Because that's not the best decision. One out of 10% is not a fucking quality that's not a quality percentage for consistency. So five, another five shots, 50%. That's not five. That's not 50%. That's 20%. Is it every other shot you hit that shot? 50%? I can live with 50%. That's fine. Coin flip. We could take a lot of coin flips that are fucking not actually coin flips, and we're fine with those. So I'll take 50%. That's a good-ass shot. But the moment you go from 50% and you just start ratcheting it down and lower and lower and lower, you're going to hit that shot again in a hundred shots. That sounds like a fucking awful shot. And it sounds like a shot that you shouldn't have been trying to make. So now your decision-making and your evaluation of the decisions that you've made, it's when you are taking a shot that bad, a lot of bad decisions have taken place. So now you take, from that moment, that shot, regardless of whether you hit it or not, if you're probably not going to, then assume that you're not for the sake of the argument and go back through every decision that you make. What position are you in now? Did your bad shot put you in a worse position or did you miss the shot and then make a good decision afterwards? Because that's one of the that's one of my key nuggets. That is a saying that I have coined to hold on to that I think about all the time is precision makes the decision. The, pr the precision of your decision. Sometimes you just miss. Sometimes you get lucky and you make it. But whether or not you make a good decision afterwards is based on whether or not you hit the shot. If you didn't hit the shot, let's see, you got someone by their back. There's a 10-foot wall on your side. It's just a small building. You have wrapped around, and you see him halfway down the wall, and he's running to go around the corner. But you didn't have enough time to just get a clean shot as he runs back around that corner away from you. So if you don't hit that shot right there, the one thing that I always see the most people do all the time is they then chase that person another 10 feet around that corner, and then guess what happens as soon as they get around the corner? They die to themselves because they put a bunch of time in between the last time they saw them and a bunch of their line of sight no longer exists, so they don't understand what's happening around that corner anymore, and they just blindly run into it right on time. Because the person that knows where they just got shot, oh shit, what? Well, they just shot me directly from behind. I got about three seconds. 
So that's enough time to reload. And thank you for showing up right on time for me. What a fucking awful decision that is to just blindly chase them. Like, oh, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Come here. I'm gonna get you. Like, no, they fucking, you gave them time to be prepared. You know what the last thing I want to do is chase them around that corner. I'm going fucking back around the other way. I'm going back around the building. And the last thing I'm going to do is do exactly what they are expecting me to do. Why the fuck would I do that? Is getting a fucking another raw fucking Midwest 1800s gunfight around a fucking corner where we're just fucking quick drawing as fast. No fucking way. That's worse than a coin flip because you've actually given them more information than you now have. They ran around the corner, and you're doing exactly what you th what they think that you're going to do. They know what you're going to do. You're going to run around that corner, and you're fucking coming. <laughs> and then they're fucking just standing there, sh waiting, and you're going to show up right on time. I'm ditching my ass either the exact opposite way or back around the building, or I'm just going to stand right on that corner, and I'm going to let them make another mistake. I bet you you aren't thinking... After that person turns around and waits around that corner and no one shows up and it's five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. Now you've taken that decision instead of making your bad decision and making your mistake. You made a good decision by not giving them more information. You've actually clouded the information that you gave them by not doing what they expect. And now it's their turn to make another mistake. So now you have to think about, well, I'm not going to, what's the last thing that you expect someone to do? Most of the time, someone runs around like, oh, I'm going to fucking come get you. What happens when they just don't show up? What happens when that person just stands in the exact same place and they just didn't move? That might be the last thing that anyone is expecting. And you just, now they just don't understand. They just don't have any, any information to work with anymore. Nothing reliable. They didn't hear you. They don't see you anymore. Now it's been even longer since they saw you than you saw them. So you've actually reversed the roles by not just making a terrible decision off of your bad precision. That is the first moment that you get to make another good decision is the moment that you just missed. Because that moment they're still processing what is actually occurring. They're still picking up on the information. That moment is the initiation of the information gathering of that moment for them, but you have been gathering information. So you get to still make a more informed decision than they do, most likely. And there's a lot of information that you might not understand that they do in that situation, stuff that they've been told by their teammates, which is why it's just as important for your teammates and for you to all be communicating everything that you know so that you have the most to work with in any given situation, at least relative to how much they have to work with. And the moment that you miss, boom, right there, you have to make a good decision. What are they expecting you to do? Do you have to do that? There's a chance that you have to do that. And that just missing that shot was the key to getting out of that situation. It might be that you haven't done anything wrong leading up to that and you did just miss the shot. But that is something that you have to evaluate yourself. Is there, there, if there's nothing else you could have done, then there's nothing else. Sometimes you just miss. There's nothing else to it. But if there's more that you could have done with what you knew, and you could have acted faster and you would have put yourself in a better situation to give yourself a better chance at that shot because that's all that it really is. It's just stacking up as many good decisions as you can to give yourself the most information and the best chance, the best chance at the best situation that you can muster. That's what it actually is. If that's not how you're thinking about your game plan, then it's a shitty game plan. If you are not thinking about how you, if you're not really seriously considering and looking forward to how you can adjust and how you can be flexible, if you're not expecting to have to adjust 
first of all, who the fuck are you playing? If you're just winning just for free, then get the fuck out of those games and actually challenge yourself to fucking win. Second of all, it's 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 not gonna work. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Like, there are no extra words. It's not gonna work. Once you're playing against people that actually know what they're doing, the moment you realize you no longer know what you're doing, if you don't recognize it for what it is, you are wasting your fucking time. That's that's it. It's not going to work. There's no fucking lying because the hub your opponent is not gonna let you lie the you get step in that arena the truth comes out sometimes you just don't hit the shot that doesn't mean you're better or worse for it but when you are engaged in a game where your decision making was really good and you can recognize it for what it was at least for where you are relative to your progress currently your decision making was as good as it's gonna get right now, and you still lost. That is something to appreciate. Appreciate it. Because that's how you learn. That's how you keep an open mind. That's what an open mindset affords you is holy shit. Look at that. Now that was a game. Wow. There's so many games where I appreciate those games more than the ones that I won. Like the easy wins where I just steamroll someone. That's just once you get to a certain point in your development where that stuff just is not useful. It's good for like reinforcing. Like, did I do with that stuff? Well, did I do that right? I did. Oh, there we fucking go. I love it. Let's go. Let's keep doing that stuff. But as far as like, really pivotal moments where you get to learn something really like truly game defining when you see the way someone else has affected your game that you have not seen before when you keep an open mind that's how you grow that's how you grow the most the fastest is just recognizing what as as many people are doing as and all of the best patterns. But when we talk about patterns, it's just so easy to fall back into the trap of the numbers that define that define a shittier player. I say shitty. Not shitty, not lesser, but a less refined player it's easy for them to fall back into the traps of looking at numbers for face value and seeing that as patterns to be recognized. But those numbers obviously don't tell the whole story. When we talk about pattern recognition, so much of it that comes to mind is just like, fallacies like the gambler's fallacy where we, everyone thinks that they're due all the time and it's you know that randomness isn't random and then there's some narrative behind the randomness but sometimes not sometimes all of the time random means just as much that something is going to happen 10 times in a row as it not happening a hundred for a hundred times like random doesn't mean always permanently average outside of like it's just someone sitting behind well oh blue is up three so i better give red two and you know don't want them getting too far apart sometimes random is extra extra random sometimes something is gonna happen eight times in a row when it never happened more than three times in a row before and sometimes that eight times in a row is going to show up at the beginning of your data set which is whatever you are recognizing patterns within sometimes the crazy random shit happens back to back to back but you need a larger data set to actually evaluate real patterns. Small, tiny 
data sets make for lots and lots of fucking lies. It doesn't go well when you just start assuming shit. You have to let it prove itself over time. And to do that, the marathon mindset of keeping an open mind and admitting to yourself that you don't know better and it's not just what you think it is all the time, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I would go as far to say is I have more faith in it being there because I haven't seen it yet. That's how far inside out I have turned it for myself. Uh, there's there has to be more there. Ha I, there's no way I have discovered all of it. There's no fucking way. There's no way the whole player base has discovered all of what a truly impressive and complicated game worth playing involves like i mean there's shit like people are still doing stuff with the meta in chess like literally all the time every meta is constantly evolving if you have the right mindset for it you can be a part of it you can be a part of the change but you have to go look for it no one else is just going to show up with a box full of mastery in this game for you to just open up and you just take it and you just put on your little hat. I'm number one on the top of it. Like, you gotta go fucking get it. You gotta keep an open mind while you're doing it. It's not just, oh, well, I'm the best and I can do all this shit all the time and I can do whatever I want and I can make it work if I want to. You gotta prove that it works, and it needs to prove that it works to you to accept that. But you gotta keep an open mind, because it could come from anywhere. And walling yourself off from different avenues of information, you might feel like you're doing it out of necessity, but there's just, in my mind, there is too great a chance that you are not allowing for those for every avenue of valuable information to reach you. It's so, so important for you to critically think for yourself and just know why you understand things the way that you do. And it's not going to be the same as everyone else all the time. That's obvious. And it doesn't mean that other people are worse for understanding things differently. They just feel differently about it than you do. Other people don't need the same things that you do. You don't need the same shit as other people. That will be obvious, and that will change your understanding of what is and is not valuable. I just appreciate what other people find value in. There's no reason not to. Live vicariously through other people and appreciate what they appreciate. And don't just disrespect what they have to say just because you don't think that they are on whatever level you you require them to be on it doesn't fucking work that way and you're gonna be something that if you prove it to yourself once it's gonna be something that you're gonna recognize throughout your life everyone that you meet someone's gonna have something of value to offer and that is worth appreciating and when you do that you're just only going to be better for it there's nothing else that can keep you from learning as much as possible, as much as you can. And it's like I will keep saying, there will be plenty of shit that will try to hold you back throughout your life. You don't need to do it to yourself. That is so... So, so unnecessary. It's insane. I just, it doesn't, just doesn't make any sense to me anymore. It really doesn't. And I am sure I've fucking talked about this long enough. Cut this one down into a bunch of videos. Make it more digestible. As always, as always, as always. Your mindset. Just like anything else, 
but specifically with your mindset and the way that you make decisions, you got to be safe. You got to stay dangerous and you got to take it easy. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. Decide to enjoy things that actually does work. You, that is something that you can decide. You know it's not going to last forever. You're going to grow from it. You're going to be a better person for having done it. Grow up. Go get it done. Go figure out who you are. Keep an open mind. Make decisions that serve the person that you are trying to become. And then once you become that person, when you become that person, get ready to start making decisions on how to become the person that that person wants to become every day. Keep it going every day. Keep it going. It's every day. Thank you. Thank you for becoming who you are meant to be. Thank you for trying your best. Thank you.